Peace, y'all. Daniel Shane here with PLC and Divided. Y'all already know what it is. And I'm here with P today, and we're doing the first segment of uh, Black Business Review. Today, we're going to be talking about One Bank United. Um, a lot of you know we One Bank United it is the biggest black-owned bank, um, I guess, out right now. You know what I mean? Um, me and P went down there personally, and, um, you know... Um, to check it out, see what was going on with it, and you know, we're gonna give our thoughts about One Bank United. Uh, we have specific topics that we're gonna be talking about, and I'll get that to you real briefly before we get into it. The first is going to be environment, the second is gonna be customer service, the third is gonna be services, the fourth is gonna be is it helpful to black people, and the fourth, or sorry, the fifth is going to be would you bank with them? All right, so those are the categories. I'm going to go ahead and kick this thing off with the first uh, part of the segment, which is the environment. All right, now, um, I'll start it off, and then I'll let P go ahead and take it from there. But as far as what I thought about the environment, um, you know, um, I thought the, I thought it was okay. I thought it was cool, you know. Uh, um, as far as the area, it wasn't a, it wasn't a predominantly black area, um, which I think is good because it is it is marketing to a black environment you know for, you know it's for black people so it should be in a black area um so i thought the area was good um the building um it could have used some renovations and by the way we went to the one bank united branch in miami i did i should have mentioned that at the very beginning of the video but we went to the one in miami um but yeah as far as the building the building could have used some renovations um as far as the inside it looked very professional looking for the most part um Again, even on the inside, it could use some renovations. On the outside, it could use some renovations. Um, it did have a nice, interesting mural um, on the uh, side of the bank that I, I thought was had some very powerful images on it, um, and you know was very interesting to say the very least. Uh, but other than that, um, I thought the outside or ex exterior and interior of the of the building was in fair condition. I thought it was fair. You know, it it. it you know it could be better it could have used some renovations but overall i thought it was fair and that's pretty much my thoughts on it i mean i don't i don't expect it to be um in pristine condition especially considering um the lack of funding for for our black bank so you know with that being said those are my thoughts on it so what do you think about that p well i mean as far as the exterior i thought it was ugly <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'll do the bag like that. It's in desperate need of um, some work. I, I, that, that's the best way I could put it. The parking lot is—it's not in good condition. <laughs> Come on, man. it's an old building. It's, it's definitely an old building, but I think that they need to put a little bit more money into the exterior, especially in an area where they're trying to redevelop. It just—it doesn't go with the whole redevelopment plan for that area in the inside is is much more cleaner um it's more updated it still needs some work but um i didn't like i didn't like the murals inside of the building i think i saw a, pic, a mural of like uh abraham lincoln or something like that i really wasn't a fan of well, the mural had some very like um you know, it was a lot of symbolism in that mural, you know, so it was a lot going on in the, in the mural itself. But, you know, I, I thought the mural was cool. I thought they went for like uh, I thought they tried to be different. They dared to be different with the exterior, you know, <laughs> well, dared to be ugly with the exterior. It was ugly. Like, Come on, ugly. man. Hey, <laughs> look, I thought the exterior was was was. It was. I thought it was good, man. I thought it was good. Go ahead, go ahead, P. I'm sorry, I ain't ready. I'm done with that. You done with that? All right. So overall thoughts on the exterior. P thinks it's ugly. I think that it was. I thought it was okay. You know. I guess. You know. Yeah. Teach his own. I guess. You know. When it comes to the exterior. I mean. I, I say. You wouldn't see that building in certain areas. Uh, where where people have higher disposable income but you would like you that. wouldn't see a black owned bank in certain areas anyway so that's, that's true, that's true, <laughs> but it's not it's not a traditional uh, a bank it doesn't look like a traditional bank basically all right i mean i get the way you. that is the way that is designed i probably would have drove past it i wouldn't have known it was a bank unless i was looking for it 
All right, you know what? I'm, it you know it does kind of give off kind of like a flea market vibe from the outside. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it all the way 100. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna lie to y'all, but but oh, but you know, you know what? It's still presentable. It's still passable. I'm not even going. You know, it's still respectable. You know what I mean? Yes, it could use some renovations. Yes, we could do a little bit better with the exterior. But you know what? Overall, it's still presentable. It still does what it needs to do. So that's all I gotta ask for, you know what I mean? So, you know, we're gonna go with that right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> all right, so let's move on to the next topic. The next topic is the customer service that we got at the bank. Um, I'll go ahead and let P start this one off and I'll go after him. Well, I had no problems with the customer service. I thought everybody was friendly. Um, they were nice. Um, they kept asking us if we needed help. You know, it was very, uh, very good. Yeah, you know what? You know, I I thought the same. The customer service was actually I was very impressed with the customer service. Everybody, you know, the the personal banker that was there, you know, they were they were very willing to answer questions. Uh they were very helpful. They did everything they they could to be accommodating to us. Um you know, they treated us like, you know, like how we're supposed to be treated as potential clients or as clients. You know, so I, I thought the customer service was very good because, you know, us, our black businesses are, always get a bad rap for having bad customer service. But that that definitely wasn't the case here. We got some good customer service. Um, and, you know, I, I was, you know, I couldn't be happier with the customer service. So, you know what I mean? So that's those are my thoughts on that. Anything you want to add to that, Pete, before we move on? All right, nothing. All right, let's move on to the next topic. So the next topic was the actual services that the bank offered. All right, now you want to start this one off, P, or you want me to start it off? Start. All right, I'm gonna start this thing off. All right, so the services thing, the services was actually something that, you know, I was a little disappointed with. Okay, now let me let me start with the pros before I go into the cons. Okay, so the pros were, they they offer a, a personal a personal bank account. They offer a personal bank account. They offer a checking. They offer a savings. Uh, they offer uh, money market savings. They offer all your basic bank accounts. You know what I mean? They offer a secured card. So if you if you're looking to rebuild your credit, you know, and get back into the good graces with the three credit bureaus, um, then it's good for you because you can get a secured card with them, and you know, you know, and and and, and be good. They also offer home loans, which is also a plus. All right, so if you're a first-time home buyer or maybe you're looking to get in another house or you're looking for investment properties, you can go over there and they do home loans and, you know, they can they can make that happen for you. So that's also a plus. All right, so those are the pluses. Now, the cons were they didn't offer auto loans. They don't offer pr- uh, business loans. Um, they don't offer home equity loans, okay? Now, that's a problem for me because, you know, I need, you know, uh, I buy, unfortunately, I have a habit of buying things from time to time. So when that happens, I need to be able to go to my bank, you know, for good rates, you know, for good interest rates. And I want to have a good relationship with my bank. So if I need something, I can get it from them. And if I can't get it from them, that means I have to go somewhere else with someone who I don't have a relationship with, you know. So, you know, that that definitely was a con. I, I need. You know, the fact that they don't offer business loans to me is a little counterproductive. You know, we're in our in the black society. A lot of us are trying to be entrepreneurs, you know, and we need that extra push in order to get into the entrepreneurial industry. You know, and, you know, if one bank United did business loans, then that would be that could possibly be that extra push. Now, from what I understand, they actually did business loans at one point, but stopped doing it. Um for whatever reason i'm guessing i'm assuming they would lost a little bit of money doing it uh, but that's definitely something that they should start doing again in my opinion um you know maybe they just need to closely you know uh, uh evaluate, evaluate the, the loans that they'll get that they're giving out a little bit more closely but i don't think they should stop offering those loans so that was something that definitely uh definitely turned me off a little bit from them uh what do you think about that p i mean i definitely agree agree and to me it's kind of uh it's kind of bad when you can offer you're you're willing to give somebody a home loan but you know give you a loan now a person they'll be in debt for like 30 years you're willing to do that but you're not going to give somebody a loan that wants to create a business for themselves something that they can um 
create pass passive income that they can pass down to their children, children's children. You know, I really wasn't a fan of that. And you know, the purpose of having a bank is is a place where you can. It's like a one stop shop. You know, you like to have your money. You have your money in your bank account. Um, if you need an auto loan, you want to go there, possibly get a good rate from your bank. If you want a credit card, you already have good credit. You don't want a secured credit card. Um, you get it from the bank that you have. It's like, to me, honestly, in my opinion, the services that they offered, it, it seemed like it's more for somebody that's just trying to establish themselves or rebuild something that they lost. But for somebody that's already you know, well-established, it, it seemed like they were lacking in certain services that a person would look into. And, and you know what, that's kind of understandable because it, it does cater. A lot of us are in that stage where we're trying to rebuild. You know, we, we've had bad credit and we're trying to get back on our feet and rebuild our credit and come back from the repossession and the bankruptcy and the whatever, you know, to get back on our feet. So for a lot of us, that's good. But uh, for any kind of financial institution, your your services should go all the way around. You know what I mean? To be able to cater to every kind of customer that you have walking through that door, and I don't I don't see them as having those kind of services. You know what I mean? They need to think about the long term growth of their their bank. So you're building a relationship with your customers. You're helping rebuild their their credit and also. Um, encouraging encouraging them to be financially literate you know what i mean but what happens when when they're in a better financial position and now they want to expand you don't have the services that can help them so they might have to go get a bank account somewhere else they might have to go to a I guess you could say they they might have to go to a credit union or they might have to go to the bigger banks in order to get those services now they're putting themselves in a bad position in the long run because a lot of people hate to say it a lot of people are are lazy they like to they like a one stop shop they want to have their money in one place a lot of times and they want to they want to build a relationship with their bank and you can't do that with with I feel like you can't do that with one united after a certain point okay all right, so that wraps that up. You know, I gave my thoughts on that. Um, so I guess we can go ahead and move on to the next topic, which is uh, would you bank with them? And I'll let Pete start this one off. <laughs> well, I, well, I mean, I would bank with them. You know, it just so happened at that time that when I did go there uh, with the intent of giving them my money, they weren't ready to receive my money. Um uh, <laughs> I guess because the systems were down. Um, I I would I would. I'm I'm I think I'm going to create an account just to test it out. Um, but you know, if it's similar to like some uh, credit unions, I I don't know. I might end up closing it if they rely too much on on automated services. I, I tend to like having an actual relationship with. The bank. I like to speak to human beings. I don't like when everything is automated, uh, because when that happens, you run into problems. Say, like when you have sus uh, suspicious activity on your card, and then they block your card, and you need to call to get it unblocked. You know, I hate dealing with with you calling the phone system, and you keep getting some. You getting an auto line. You can't speak to a human being. It's just a hassle. So I like the convenience of being able to call a number and speaking to somebody directly. Yeah, and I think for me too, you know, to, to give my um, opinion on it, I think I would. I, I mean, I don't see why I wouldn't bank with them. I mean, they have, they have some of the, they have, uh, you know, services that I could definitely take advantage of uh, for sure. You know, they have the check and they have the savings. You know. Um, of course, they don't have those other services that I would have. I would love for them to have, but they have those basic things that I would use. And of, of course, I want to support our black-owned banks. Um, so I think that I would definitely bank with them. I don't see why I wouldn't bank with them. Um, you know, 
you know, I say I say the only con when it comes to banking with them is they don't have too many br uh, branches. So just like what P said, uh, everything would be online, everything would be automated, everything would be, you know, far, far and far between. I, for me, I, for me, when I when I bank with someone, I like to be able to stop by. I got my money there, so I want to stop by when I feel like you know. I haven't seen my money in a while. I need to be able to see it. I need to be able to talk to somebody and have somebody hand me my money when I feel like it. So I get a little paranoid like that. And, you know, the fact, the fact that they have a branch and it's kind of far away from my house, that's a little troublesome. But, you know, overall, I mean, I, that wouldn't stop me from banking with them. Um, I think I definitely would bank with them. The only reason that I haven't started banking with them yet, the time that I did take a visit down there, it seems that their system was down. Uh, you know, and, and you know what, you know what, P's over here laughing, but honestly, 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 every company has those kinds of problems. So the fact that I went down there on one particular day out of the blue and they had systems down, that doesn't say anything about them as a company. You know what I mean? That doesn't say anything about them as a product or anything like that. So, you know, I, I haven't done an account yet. Uh, but I definitely plan to in the future um, get an account with, with One Bank United. You know, so those are my thoughts on that. Anything you want to add to that, P? I really, I really just want to know um, what is their strategic plan for growth, because, like you said, they have a limited amount of locations, and yes, it is in a predominantly black area, but there's more than one predominantly black area in Miami. Um, there's, you know, there's North Miami. There, there's also Miami Gardens. So they should think about having uh, smaller locations or at least some type of ATM or satellite location where people can go to. Um, the hours of service doesn't have to be 24 seven or a standard time that most banks are open, but at least a, a place where people can physically go to, that would be very good. Because like you said, I stay far away from the location in Miami. I, I don't see myself driving all the way there, uh, especially to that part of Miami, which I don't frequently go to. Uh, it's like once in a blue moon. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So that was actually the the, the, the next topic we were going to go into, which is growth. That was our, bo our bonus topic. <laughs> so we're going to talk about growth. So, so P did touch on it a little bit, but I'm going to touch on it. Um, I'm going to give you some some of the details that were that was presented to me from the banker that I spoke to as far as the plans that they were going to go into. And then I'm going to give you what my thoughts are about those plans. So from what I understand from the banker, the plans for One United is to kind of grow by offering more home loans. They don't plan to really do too many more branches. They don't plan to really offer any other kinds of loans. So those loans that I was mentioning before that would have been very helpful or would be very helpful to me, uh, like auto loans, home equity loans, um, business loans. I mean, very important one right there. But um, can, I, can I just uh, mention one thing? Go ahead. Well, go ahead. a little bit more. The problem that I have with just offering home loans is because especially it's in South Florida, when you look at the demographics of South Florida, uh, black people in total make a, about 18% of the population. And we have a big problem with um, discrimination as far as black people being able to get jobs in Miami. So if black people can't get jobs in Miami, well, let me correct myself. You can get a job, but at getting professional type jobs that pay the type of money that will give you the ability to invest in different things. I'm not talking about the job working at Burger King or Walmart or something like that. I'm talking about jobs that pay you, give or take, a, a 50, 50,000 and up. Black people have a difficult time getting those type of jobs because we get discriminated against in Miami. So if we can't get jobs, in order for us to generate money or generate revenue, we have to open up a business. So they're not offering that type of service that black people can utilize. And especially in a time where the housing market, the home values in, in Miami, it seems to be inflated. You know, you can go somewhere to like Atlanta or Georgia, or Georgia you buy a $200,000 home, it look like a mansion. You go into Miami, a two hundred thousand dollar home is a crack house. 
I hear you. <laughs> you know, so a per- loans that they're giving is not going to be a little bit amount of money. They're going to be giving people loans for three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars. So it kind of strikes me, it's kind of as odd that they're willing to give somebody a home loan and lock them up for thirty years, but they're not willing to take a risk and evaluate somebody's business plan to see how how um, much potential it has. That's odd to me. Yeah, I mean, I'd I'd have to agree with that. Um, I think that, you know, for these, you know, I I think with the business loans in general, like, um, I, I think it's one thing that they don't offer business loans now. But the fact is, is it's like when I was looking into the growth part of it, they don't even plan to offer it in the future. So it's like, okay, you don't offer it now. That's one thing. All right, cool. I I guess you don't offer now, whatever. I understand you're a small bank, you're growing, but you don't plan to offer that in the near future, uh, knowing the financial situation of the people that you're trying to help. Um, That's that's somewhat of a red. um, That's kind of a problem for me. And I'm not going to say that's a deal breaker or anything like that. But that's something I would definitely be concerned about. And that's something I would definitely want to talk to. I don't know, like a, a CEO or somebody to kind of really get some insider information on. Because, I mean, we need businesses. We need assets. We don't need... We, we need real estate too, of course. But we need real estate for investment purposes. Not necessarily real estate so we can just live in and be ballerish and that sort of shit. You know what I mean? So, we need these business loans. So I don't understand why that wouldn't be a, a immediate priority for them to be going into in the, in the future. So, you know, it's you know. not it's not like people are just walking in there and say, hey, I need one hundred thousand dollars to start up this business. You know, they're going they have to evaluate the person's business plan to see if it's profitable. So applying for a business loan, it would be a case by case basis. So if they say it's too much risk. They need to evaluate it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I don't see no problem in that. If they if they're saying they're short on staff, well, I mean, the potential to earn to earn more money outweighs the limited staff or the limited resources. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. At the end of the day, you always have to say so on whether or not you're going to offer the loan to someone or not. But I don't think that. You should just not offer the loan and turn away all cases. You know what I mean? So, you know, I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is, you know. So we'll go ahead and move on to the uh, the final topic. And the final topic is, is it helpful to black people? You know, what I mean, so that's probably the most important topic. Um, I'm going to let Pete t- uh, touch on that one first. What do you think about that, Pete? Is it helpful to black people? Well, it's helpful to black people to a certain extent. Like I said, if you're trying to re- reestablish uh, your credit, if you had um, a you know, bad history with the major banks and you're like in check systems or something like that, you know, they probably can help you establish... Uh, they give you a bank account, help you establish your credit again with the secured credit card. But other than that, um, once your credit is, is good, um, you have enough money in your bank account and you have enough money saved, you want to um, buy a home, they probably can help you with that. But auto loans, business loans, unsecured credit, these things they can't help you with. So what are they going to do when a, when a person walks into their bank and ask them about them services? ask them about those services all they can do is say well no i'm sorry we don't offer that at this time have you tried bank of america <laughs> have you tried sun trust they ha- what are they, what are they going to do cuz they don't offer those services mm-hmm. you know i think when it comes to services you know i mean okay they don't offer the home loan they don't offer not, not the home loan i'm sorry the business loans and this and the unsecured credit so regular credit cards and those sort of things Okay, that's fine. You know, that's fine. But when we're talking about overall, is it helpful to black people? I would have to say overall it is. But my problem, um, well, not really a problem, but I would say the question about One United Bank, and this question is yet to be answered, it, um, is their, their funding, their, their, their backing. Now, from what I understand, they're a black-owned bank, okay, which is cool. But 
it's not really stated who their contributors are, you know, who their donators are, you know, where are they getting their funding? Where does the operating uh, costs or operating um, uh, money coming from? So I, that's something that I think they should be a little bit more transparent about. Um, I think um, when that question's answered, um, I think it'll also be it'll also answer the question on whether or not it's helpful to black people, because if the money is coming from the Jewish people, then we know overall it's not going to be helpful for black people. You know, but if it's coming from a reliable source, then we can say more than likely in the future, it should be helpful for black people. As of right now, I would say um, it's a financial institution. You know, it's it's targeted at black people. Is it helpful? It can be helpful to the people that utilize it correctly. Um, but if it's funded by Jewish people, then we know what the goal is overall. Um, if it truly is a black owned bank, then it needs to conduct itself like a black owned bank, you know, in the, in the future and, and, you know, make moves that, you know, that says black owned bank. So, I mean, I, I guess, is it helpful? I guess that question remains to be seen. You know, the more we learn about one, one bank united, uh, the, the better answer we'll have to that sort of question. You know, I mean, anything you want to touch on about that, P? Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for this first segment of uh, Black Business Review. Um, yeah, I will holler at you guys later, man. Um, hit it up in the comment section below. POC Undivided on Facebook. POC Undivided on Mora. Shout out to the Mora's people. Uh, you can hit us up, POC Undivided at gmail.com. King Shane 7 on Twitter. But until next time, peace.